Implementing, we can start with all. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. <clears throat> then we can Mataji, Hare Krishna. Then. Okay, how are you doing? I think we, we hardly spoke. Uh, I'm doing good, Prabhuji. 16 rounds are going well. Uh, Prabhuji, I stop. I'm doing 8, Prabhuji, but uh, whenever possible, I'm doing 16, Prabhuji. But I'll do, Prabhuji. Is your 8 consistent? Yes, Prabhuji. Do you have some association, personal association there? Uh, yes, mm. my friends are there. So, uh, Same thing? So join Manohar Gopal? Yes, yes, yes. How many of you are there? Another two members, Prabhuji. So three of you? Yes, Prabhuji. And is it, uh, are there husbands or your husband also favorable? <laughs> No husbands, <laughs> only three of you. Yes, Prabhuji. where you are in California? Uh, no, Prabhuji, you know, Nevada. And which, which state? It's the name of a state, Nevada. Nevada, it's next to the California. If we travel for 40 minutes, we will enter into California, Prabhuji. It's too far, it was not too far. I could have come once. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you are coming to California, um, let us know, Prabhuji. We can, I mean, SFO airport is like four and a half hours, four, four, four to five hours drive from here. Actually. Which airport? SFO, San Francisco airport. Oh, San Francisco airport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know when that will happen. <laughs> but okay. Let's keep continuing and anytime, any difficulty, please. Let me know, Mataji. Sure, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so maybe we will start now. Yeah. Om Ajnanti Miran Dhasya Jnananjana Shala Prayra Jakshu Militam Yena Tasmay Shri Guru Venama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Ye Nabhutale Soyam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Udatha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagarpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastupe Dr. Panchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Rishabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpata Rupescha Kripa Sindhu Vahivacha Patita nam pavane bio Vaishnavi bio namod papam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadarpa Shri Vashadi Gaurabhakta Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Mukham Karoti Vachalam Pangum Lampayate Jirim Yat Kripa Tamaham Bande Shri Purum Dinatarinam Parmananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Bauravani Pracharide Nirvishesha Shunnevadi Paschatya De Shatarine Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhaktarupa Sarupakam 
भक्तावतारम भक्ताक्षम ममा भक्ता शक्ति कम जयत शुरत पंगो ममा मंदमती मत्सर्वस्वा पदा भोज राधा मदन मोहन दिव्या वृंदारण्य कल्पा धुमादा श्रीमत नागर सिंहासनस्त श्रीमत राधा श्रील गोविंद देव वेष्ठा लिभे से मनु स्मरा श्रीमन रास रसारंभी वंशी वटाठस्थिता कर्षण वेणु स्मने गोपी गोपीनाथा श्रेष्ठ नम ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवा ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवा सो रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम टुडे सेकेंड कैंड टू चैप्टर नंबर फाइव एंड द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इट इज कॉल्ड द कॉज ऑफ ऑल कॉजेस सर्व कारण कारण This chapter begins with the, the conversation between Narayan Muni and Brahma, and the context continues from the previous fourth chapter. <clears throat> That was the conversation between Sukadev Goswami and Maharaj Parikshit, and there Maharaj Parikshit asks few more questions. <clears throat> And one of the question, Padakshit Maharaj asked was, "How is universe created? How is universe maintained? How is it destroyed? Tell me something about the primary creation which happens by the Lord. Tell me something about the secondary creation which happens by Brahma, Prajapatis, and others. How the three modes are created? How they um, work under direction of the Lord?" um how they what is their role during primary creation the role of three modes what is their role during secondary creation so these various questions about um and creation was asked by maharaj parikshit maharaj parikshit was thinking that i will not ask about past times of krishna now first let me try to understand krishna and krishna's opulences and krishna's creation and then later on i will ask about krishna's personal life also so sukadev goswami being the acharya he uh, took a humble position um, <clears throat> and he says that it is not possible to understand the supreme lord he is all auspicious he is the source of everything and there with many verses sukadev goswami glorifies the lord vasudev and then he says he glorifies maharaj parikshit for very beautiful questions and he says i will answer your questions through brahma narada samvad and this is where we come to this chapter where now narad muni is with brahma and narad muni asks many questions to brahma and brahma is answering those questions and those questions are the same that were asked by maharaj parikshit or similar that was asked by maharaj parikshit and their answer and we discuss how a uh, uh, genuine devotee of the lord he does not um, speak on his own authority but he speaks on the authority of mahajans or uh, or the lord or uh, the shruti shastras in that way <clears throat> and then we also see um we see the brahma gaudiya madhva sampradaya we see um narad muni received his knowledge from brahma and narad muni gave that knowledge to vyasa and vyasa gave to madhava acharya and then it is passed on um, and that is our sampradaya so this particular section also emphasizes how the knowledge was transferred between brahma and narada we also hear that Uh, Om Agyan Timirandasya, which says, "I was born in ignorance, and my spiritual master opened my eyes with a torchlight of knowledge. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto him." So here we see how Narad Muni was also bewildered, and um, he humbly inquires from his own father Brahma 
about the realized truth. <clears throat> so Narad Muni begins by saying, uh, uh, my dear father, O Brahma Dev, O Brahma Ji, uh, please tell me, uh, please explain to me transcendental knowledge by which I can understand the truth of the living entity and the truth of the super soul so that I can understand everything. And this is begins with curiosity, inquisitiveness, and Narad Muni wants to understand the transcendental knowledge. And he begins with asking six questions. Um, the, one of the questions Narad Muni asks is, please tell me how the universe is created. And how is the and what happens to the universe after the disruption? How is it conserved? How, how it remains? And then it comes back. Tell me about this, the whole cycle of universe. What is the universe made up of? Um, uh, who is the who is the shelter of the universe? Under whose direction the universe is working? Who is the universe dependent upon? Um, what are the characteristics? How do we understand this universe? So various questions about because um, I mean imagine there is the supreme creator Brahma. And Narad Muni is a child and he's seeing everything in the universe. And he knows that everything has come about by the mercy of my father Brahma. So he's very curious to understand everything that exists. It is naturally, it is natural for a living entity to be inquisitive. So then he says to Brahma that uh, you know everything about the creation because everything has happened through you. So you know everything about it. So please kindly explain it to me. <clears throat> and he says, just like uh, everything past, present and future is within your grip, just like a walnut. So if you see walnut is also like, like a covering and underneath there is, there is a nut, there is a shell covering. So this is, the shell is like a universe and underneath everything that is happening in the past that is happening now that will happen in the future is under the control of Brahma. That's what Narad Muni thinks. Since beginning, this is like, like for example, you um, you start construction by yourself and then you construct the whole house. And the child says, what is this house made up of? Uh, what are the ingredients? Um, and now, now there is a lot of things happening. Tell me everything about how it came about like the way it is now. So likewise, it's about the whole universe. So Narad Muni is asking where this universe came from, what it is made up of, um, what happens, how is it preserved, how is it conserved, um, under whose shelter, um, um, direction um, this universe is working, um, what is the nature, the characteristics of this universe, like, like this. Then he asked Brahma that, uh, are you the Supreme Lord or are you working under somebody? Uh, what is your real position? Um, is the living entities or the ingredients of this universe, are, are the living entity jivas, are they your personal energy or um, like, are, the living, are you the source of the living entities um, and are you the source of the ingredients from which this universe is coming from? Um, um, what is your position and what is the source of your knowledge? You uh, you know everything and is, is your knowledge your knowledge? Is your knowledge coming from somebody? So very basic question, Narad Muni asked his father, like, what is your position? Um, and he says it in very respectful manner. He, it seems like, uh, he says in a very respectful manner, it seems like all living entities are emanating from you like from Brahma's, um, you know, anybody who sees Brahma from his forehead, Narayan is coming, uh, sorry, Shiva is coming from his nose, Narayan is coming in the form of Varahade. And it seems like um, uh, all, some are created from his heart, some living entities are created from his hand, some from his thighs, and Brahma is doing all this magic and everything is coming from him. And Narad Muni is very much bewildered. Um, and he also, Narad Muni also came from the mind of Brahma. 
and Brahma does not have a wife and Brahma does not have a father or mother and Brahma is the original or seems like he is the original creator. There is nothing beyond him and Narayan is not visible to everyone. So Narad Muni has never seen him and never heard about him. So he very innocently asks, um, all the living entities are coming from you. Are they your energy? Um, and then, um, or is there somebody beyond you? Now you know everything. It's like you are the Supreme Lord who knows everything or your knowledge is coming from somebody. Please tell me about this. <clears throat> and then he says, uh, Narad Muni gives an example, just like a spider is self-sufficient without anybody's help and create the whole <clears throat> structure actually from the from cell, uh, spider, from his own saliva, um, um, creates uh, the whole network, the whole web um, around very vast. So um, is this whole universe created just like without obstruction uh, from the spider? Is it created from you? Um, is it is this your energy? <clears throat> and just like a spider is not obstructed by anybody, nor does it need anyone's help, the spider is self-sufficient to create the whole structure. Likewise, you seem to be not obstructed by anybody and you don't need anybody's help. You seem to be self-sufficient just like a spider. Um, like when Brahma wants to do something, nobody, all the demons and all the devatas, they are born from Brahma. And all the demons also worship Brahma. Devatas also worship Brahma. Everybody worships Brahma. We see Hirnakashipu wants some power, worship Brahma. Devatas like Indra, when he is some problem, worship Brahma. So everybody goes to Brahma and wherever Brahma is, wherever Brahma goes, everybody goes down. Shiva goes down to Brahma because Shiva is the son of Brahma, like Brahma. And creation point of view. Um, everybody, uh, both and Narayan is not visible. So, uh, very genuinely, uh, Narad Muni is asking about the truth of Brahma. Mm -hmm. And then he says, um, I don't know anybody else who is creating anything. Um, I don't know any other source of creation but you. All living entities, I mean, Prajapatis came from Brahma and Prajapatis are creating their own children and others. So I see nothing beyond you. Everything is coming from you. Um, but then what confuses me, Narad Muni says, what confuses me, there is nothing beyond you. Uh, your activities are unobstructed. Whatever Brahma wants, he does. And whatever benediction he wants, he gives to others. And those benedictions happen true. So Narad Muni is telling, um, nothing is visible beyond you. Uh, but at the same time, you perform such severe austerities. Tapa. Um, if you are the supreme, then for whom are you performing these austerities? Um, whom are you trying to please? Is there somebody beyond you? And this is what makes Narad Muni thinks that there is nothing. He is like the supreme um, authority, apparently, Brahma. Um, Everybody, everybody boils out respect. Everybody is created from him. But then he is trying to please somebody through his austerity. So this is what uh, Narad Muni's beautiful question. And see, these questions are very relevant to Sukadeva Goswami's question. Sukadeva Goswami's, uh, I mean, Parikshit Maharaj's question. Parikshit Maharaj's question was uh, about the universe, about the three gunas, about um, <clears throat> um, maintenance, destruction, creation. They were, they were centered around universe and the answer to this question is centered around uh, Padikshir Maharaj's question. And that's why uh, Sokadeva Goswami is quoting and then Brahma starts speaking and Brahma says, Oh Narada, oh my dear son Narada, uh, thank you for these wonderful questions. Your questions remind me of the potency of Lord. Bhagavan, Vira Darshan. Just by hearing your question, um, your question are making me remember the potency of Vasudev, potency of Krishna. So um, now that shows that no direct conversation happened. No knowledge has been given yet. This is the beginning of the no actual transfer of knowledge from Brahma to Narada. <clears throat> and um, Brahma has uh, no uh, false ego 
or um, like that he feels very good that this is what people are respecting about thinking about me <clears throat> and he is not trying to protect himself but he directly gave all the credit to Vasudev and he says like uh, whatever Brahma is thinking you glorified me in such a beautiful way and Brahma is thinking about Bhagavat Vira Darshana the potency of the Lord and when he is telling nothing is beyond you, everybody respect you um, and how you have created everything and Brahma is thinking, I did not create anything. Everything is happening by itself, by the mercy of Vasudev. I just want to serve Narayan. I just want to serve Vasudev. And then as, as I am desiring to serve him from um, my um, um, mind, you came. As I am breathing, the Lord appeared from my nose as Varahadev. Everything is happening by itself. Um, from different parts, he is just, Brahma is just thinking, how can I serve the Lord and things just happen. From his heart, Manu is created and with his wife and they start creating uh, progeny and populating the universe. So Brahma is not taking any credit. Although apparently it seems like Brahma is the one who is doing everything. He is absolutely, he is giving absolute credit to his spiritual master and his spiritual master is Narayan himself. Because um, uh, first living entity, uh, first um, the Lord transferred the transcendental knowledge in the heart of Brahma. And this is what Shri Prabhupada taught us that whatever we are able to do, if we take credit, it is because of the illusory energy of the Lord. <clears throat> and Shri Prabhupada says, uh, it will result in pride. But we should give credit to our spiritual master and, and uh, Lord Krishna. And here we see for him spiritual master and the Lord is the same. And Brahma is like, you know, your questions are reminding me of the power of Vasudev. Such beautiful questions. So clearly, um, Brahma is like answering in one in one line only, half of the questions are answered. And then he says, I am subordinate to the Supreme Lord. Um, unless one is aware of the position of Supreme Lord, one is sure to be illusioned by observing my powerful activities. This is what Brahma Ji says. So he says, if somebody does not know Vasudev, then by seeing me, they will be illusioned. Just like every living entity is seeing Brahma and they are thinking everything is coming from Brahma. And that is because they have no knowledge of Krishna. And that's how we are also illusioned. One of the angle of illusion is we think ourselves as the doers. And we think others as the doers also. And when we think ourselves as the doer and others as the doer, then uh, we will develop pride. Or we will develop envy. When others are the doers, then we develop envy. They are doing, see what they have attained and what I have not attained. And if I am attaining by my potency, then see how greater I am than you. And this, these are the two sides of the same coin, envy and pride. <clears throat> and this is because of the illusory energy of the Lord. That one does not see that Krishna is the doer. Whatever good or whatever bad that happens in our life, um, Krishna has a hand and when we don't see Krishna's hand then we make wrong decisions in our lives <clears throat> so Brahma says um, I am not the supreme lord I am subordinate to the supreme lord and if one is not aware of the position of supreme lord then one will become illusioned by seeing my powerful activities and Brahmaji accepts that yes my activities are powerful but it is not because of me it is the Lord's blessings. And he says, um, um, I, I create after Lord's creation. Whatever you see I am creating, I am just trying to do my little part uh, after the Lord's creation because all the universes were not created by Brahma. All the universes are created by Narayan. Um, and everything that I am doing is little bit here and there. And that also is Narayan doing it through me. So, um, and that's what Maharaj Parishit question was. Tell me about the primary creation and the secondary creation. So Brahma here is first explaining that I am the 
am the source of secondary creation. I just recreate what is already being created. Um, just like uh, think it from the example, Shri Prabhupada spread Krishna consciousness all over, mm. all over the world. It is said, Paschatya Deshatarini. He is the one who who spread Krishna consciousness in the Western country. Paschatya Deshatarini. And then um, all of us, uh, whatever we are doing is little bit. We are like feeding on Shri Prabhupada's mercy, feeding on Shri Prabhupada's books. Um, and feeding on Shri Prabhupada's pure devotion and his pure desire and feeding on Mahaprabhu's desire. And that's what is our real position. So we are just uh, sharing what is already given to us by Shri Prabhupada, mm -hmm. who is the one who, who propagated actually. So this is what Brahma is saying. He is telling that I am just recreating what the Lord has already created. Um, then he says, um, just like the moon and stars, they shine. Only in the presence of, they shine um, um, because of the presence of sun. If sun is not there, then moon and star have no value actually. And they reflect the shine from the sun. Likewise, whatever I am shining is actually reflecting the shine from Narayan. Uh, the, the, the shine, my, my power is actually the power of, um, power of Vasudev. Mm -hmm. Brahma says, my obeisance is to the Supreme Lord, by whose maya people call me the Supreme Controller. People think I am controlling everything. It is because of his, his illusion, his maya shakti. Uh, I offer my respectful obeisances onto him. Um, and then um, at the end, Brahma says, even maya cannot stand before the Lord. Even maya also remains at the backside of the Lord because maya is ashamed of her position. And her position is to bewilder the living entities. And because she has this task of bewildering all the living entities away from Krishna. Um, and for doing this, Maya feels ashamed. Even she cannot come um, in front of the Lord. And we something that we, we are reminded of is the interaction between Yamdutas and Yamaraj. When Yamdutas were thinking that Yamaraj is um, the, like, the final decision maker. And whatever he says, get them, punish them in this way, whatever he says, complete supreme authority. Then um, then Yam Dutas, when they encountered Vishnu Dutas, they were like, you know, who are you? Um, are you the supreme controller or there are more controllers than you? And this is natural. And this is this is what Narad Muni was going through these emotions. And now um, Brahma starts answering Narad Muni's question. And the first question he asked was, what is the, um, what are the ingredients? What is the characteristic of this universe? What is this universe made up of? What are the components of this universe on a high level? Then um, Brahmaji, in a very humble position, Brahmaji says, see, my dear son, Narada, this universe has five main components. And one is Dravya. Dravya means the ingredients with which the universe itself is made up of. Another is karma. The universe is working based on the karma. However, it is moving. It is all based on karma. Then another aspect, another component of the universe is the jiva. The living entities are the one who are moving the universe or various things are happening within the universe because of presence of jiva. And then jivas are performing kriya based on their karma. Whatever is happening to the jiva, whatever they are able to do, it's all aspect of karma. So jiva Jiva's karma, then the ingredient, and another a component of this universe is Kala, the time. Um, the time, um, everything is getting destroyed by the power of time. Everything everything is temporary. In Within the universe, everything is created and destroyed individually. And that is the Shakti of Kala Shakti. And another component, the last component of this universe is Sobhav, which is the three gunas. So Bhav arise from three gunas and they are running the show. So the ingredients, the three gunas, the jiva, the karma of the jiva and the kala shakti, the time. And he says these are the main characteristics of universe. Um, very interesting. I mean, the creation, the creator of the universe, he is explaining the universe. What are the main, main, what are the main uh, um, 
elements and characteristics of how the universe is made up of we are hearing from the secondary creator now and then he says all these are actually the energies of vishnu um, all the ingredients come from Vishnu, the three gunas come from Vishnu, time is the energy of Krishna, uh, jiva is the energy of Krishna, and the laws of karma also act under Krishna's direction uh, as super soul. Um, everyone is directed based on their karma by the potency of super soul. So everything is actually Krishna. Because the energy of Krishna is not different from Krishna. So Brahmaji says, so nothing exists in this universe other than Krishna. Vasudev is everything. Everything is coming from Vasudev. That does not make Jiva equal to God. But we are part and parcel. We are his energy. Um, and so are the three guna show is the time and so is the Maya Shakti. And so, so is the five main elements. Everything is coming from Krishna. So Brahmaji says, nothing exists. Other than, other than Vasudev. Everything is energy of Vasudev. But on abstract level, this is what the universe is. I mean, it's technical, but it's very interesting. This is These are the characteristics of the universe. And then there is very beautiful uh, two verses that we will read at the end, if time permits. But he says, um, and another question, Brahmaji says, another question you ask is, um, what is this universe dependent upon uh, or what is everything within this universe dependent upon? Who is the shelter of everything within this universe? And Brahmaji says, everything within this universe uh, and every activity within this universe is dependent upon Vasudev. The, the entire universe and everyone within the universe or every activity within the universe is under the shelter of Narayana. And then he says, people take different shelter. Some people do yoga. And what is the purpose of yoga? Is to, is to know. Is to know Narayan. What is the pur purpose of tapa? Austerity is to please him. Uh, what is the purpose of jnana? Is to have a glimpse of him. Again, to know him. Uh, then Veda is to know him. Uh, goal is to attain him. Devatas, they also are under... Um, under the shelter of Narayan. Sacrifice are also uh, is like the mouth of Narayan. And all the planets also take shelter of him. So everything takes shelter of <coughs> everything takes shelter of Narayan. And these verses, these these two verses we will see at the end. First we will continue with the flow. So uh, who is the ultimate shelter? The shelter of like, you know, different people take different shelter. Some people uh, study Vedas. They take shelter of Veda. Some people take shelter of Yoga. Some people take shelter of Gyan, Gyan Yoga. Some people perform severe austerities, Tapa. Some people perform various kind of sacrifices. And uh, some people worship demigods, Devatas. So the shelter of whoever, anybody takes shelter, the shelter of those is also Narayan. And the, the shelter of universe is also Narayan. In other words, then everything is dependent upon and the shelter of everything is Narayan. So this is another question. So again, the, the answer to all the questions is Vasudev, Narayan, 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 Vasudev, Vasudev, Vasudev. And that's how um, Brahmaji explains. And this shows Brahmaji's um, true humility of giving all credits. And that's a sign of a pure devotee. Uh, Prabhupada says a pure devotee does not take credit for himself. Rather, he gives all the credit to Krishna. Um, then Brahmaji says, I am also created by him. And whatever I am able to create now is under the supervision and direction of him. And his potency working through me. And I am also coming from him. What I am, Whatever I am able to do is he is using me. And everything is Narayan there also. Um, and uh, three gunas, three gunas also comes from Narayan. They are Narayan Shakti. And he he creates three gunas and he accepts three gunas for the purpose of creation, maintenance and destruction. What is the role of these three gunas? These three gunas um, um, cover the living entity in such a way that because of the influence of these three gunas, the living entity cannot know Narayan, cannot know him, cannot understand him. 
under its direction, they are falsely um, engaged in various activities um, without keeping him as the goal. Um, and they have various desires, they have various goals, um, and everything is the interest. Everyone is covered by these three gunas. And uh, <clears throat> these three gunas further manifest as Dravya, Kriya, and Jnana. Um, so here more on this. Uh, Dravya is and the ingredients like earth, water, fire, and ether. And they all they are all these ingredients, elements, Mahapanch Bhutas and others, um, mind intelligence, false ego, they're all Dravya. All of them are created by three gunas. And that's why we see in Bhagavad Gita also Krishna says, uh, Yantra Runani Maya. Krishna says that this body uh, is is made of is a yantra and this yantra is made of maya so how is this body made of maya because it's made of ingredients and all the ingredients are manifestation of three gunas that's why this body is also made of maya all the kriya all the activities in this world like material activities they're also influenced by three gunas different people you know um, Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita action in mode of passion, action in mode of goodness, action in mode of ignorance. So all the clear, all the knowledge, different living entities have different understanding. And there is understanding also. Knowledge in three modes, Krishna explains. Understanding in three modes, Krishna explains in 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So everything, these three gunas, they, um, they are the um, all the kriya, all the jnana, uh, all the ingredients, um, they are all manifestation of these three gunas. And these three gunas, they bind the jiva, they cover the jiva, and because of that, the jiva is not able to understand the line. <clears throat> and then the second last section of this chapter, then um, one of um, the question of Narad Muni, he asked Brahmaji, uh, my dear father, how is this universe created? So this is little complex. Um, requires little bit more attention to be able to understand this. How is this universe created? So <clears throat> so Brahmaji begins by explaining. Brahmaji says <clears throat> Um, there is a causal ocean. This causal ocean is uh, um, um, a spiritual by nature. Um, it's called Karana Ocean also. Um, and within this ocean, there is Vishnu who lies down in a half-sleeping posture. And because he is lying down in the Karana Ocean, he is called Karano Dakshai Vishnu. Shai means sleeping. So Karano Dak means on the bed of Karana Ocean, he is in a sleeping state. And that's why he is called Karano Dakshai Vishnu. He is also called by the name Mahavishnu. And this is, again, the question is, how is the universe created? So the process of creation is being described. And he is lying down. And then... Um, there is his own Shakti, Krishna's own Shakti, his Bahiranga Shakti, his Maya Shakti. And when the Lord is in this Karna the Ocean, he glances at the Maya Shakti. Um, and through his glance, he transfers the Jiva into the Maya Shakti. And just like when in a mother's womb, a soul is transferred, there is the mother's womb becomes agitated. And once the soul is transferred by the father, then the whole process of creation starts to happen. And then slowly, slowly, all the limbs and everything, the whole womb starts, the process of creation begins. But it cannot begin until the living entity is given by the father. Likewise, Maya Shakti is in a dormant state. The technical term used for that is called Pradhan, material nature. So just lying dormant, nothing exists. 
um, dormant, like Prabhupada said, like a black cloud, just lying. And then when the, when Karun Dakshai Vishnu in his sleeping state, when he glances at uh, uh, Maya Shakti, then Maya Shakti starts agitating. And then over a period of time, like, you know, just like when the soul is transferred in the womb of a mother, over a period of time, a beautiful baby is born. Um, so likewise, when the Lord transmits the living entity into the Maya Shakti, Maya Shakti represents Durga Devi, the in charge of Maya Shakti, and this glance we know refers to uh, um, Shiva. Um, anyways, um, so when the Maya Shakti is agitated, um, impregnated um, by the Jivas, then um, then from a bit over a period of time, then from there comes slowly uh, Mahatattva. Mahatattva is agitated form of Maya Shakti, who was dormant like a cloud. Now that dormant cloud like Maya with the living entity, when it is agitated, then comes Mahatattva. And uh, it's very difficult to understand, but it's okay if you don't understand. Just if you understand the steps, that is sufficient. Otherwise, very difficult to grasp. Then, from that Maya Shakti comes, three gunas are created. Rajagun comes, Satyagun comes, Tamogun comes. And then, uh, from the Tamogun, um, Maya Shakti, Mahatattva, um, for along uh, when interacts with Tamogon over a period of time, slowly forms a hanka false ego. And then um, when the Mahatattva interacts with mode of um, then when um, uh, ahanka when ahanka interact with mode of goodness, false ego in mode of goodness transforms into mind. And when the ahankar interact with mode of passion, translates into uh, intelligence and the senses. And when the ahankar interact with tamogun, mode of ignorance, it translates into um, um, sky. And then from there comes uh, air. Then from there comes fire. Then comes water. And then comes earth, gradually. So... Um, that's how, I mean, Brahmaji is explaining how the universe is created. This was the question by Maharaj Patek. Tell me about the, how the creation takes place. So, primary creation takes place and how the secondary creation takes place. So, here, Brahmaji is explaining to Narad Muni how the primary creation takes place. Against the step is, the Lord is lying um, half sleeping posture. He is Karna Daksai Vishnu. He glances at Maya Shakti. Maya Shakti becomes impregnated and results in Mahatattva. Then uh, the three modes are generated, Rajagun, Tamagun, Satyagun, from the Mahatattva. And Mahatattva itself interact with Tamagun. And from there comes Ahankar. And then Ahankar interact with three gunas, Rajagun, Tamagun, Satyagun. And this, this all interaction and creation is happening by the glance of the Lord. The Lord is glancing. And from this glance, another. Then he glances at Mahatattva. And Mahatattva then slowly mixes with um, Sattva Gun and creates mind. Then again the Lord glances at Mahatattva. Then Mahatattva slowly interacts with mode of passion and creates intelligence. Then the Lord glances Mahatattva. Then he slowly meets with time factor. Slowly interacts Mahatattva interacts with, with Tamogun and the Panch Bhutas are throughout of fire ether is created in, in progression. And then after these are created, then the Lord becomes again um, uh, dormant for 1000 years 1000 years and these elements they all exist now right now the universe are not created but earth water fire air ether mind intelligence false ego mahatattva the senses um they are all created three gunas they are all created now everything is there but they are all separate ingredients and then after 1000 years then the Lord again glances at all of them. And Lord impregnates all these elements which are created with his cohesive potency. Cohesive potency means now they combine together. And when they combine together, then forms the universes. 
if you see the universe has eight layers and those layers are earth water fire air ether mind intelligence policy but this is what the universe is made up of the covering of the universe and each next layer is 10 times thicker than the previous layer so uh, first covering of the universe is um, earth element earth and then there is 10 times thicker than earth element is the water layer 10 times thicker than the water layer is the fire it's all burning and 10 times thicker than the fire fire the, just the fire element is like millions of miles you know, the covering of the universe and then uh, after the fire element 10 times thicker than the fire element is air element and then there is ether then there is mind element, intelligence, and the false ego element. And now how can the universe be created unless these ingredients exist? So first the Lord creates these ingredients. Then the Lord combines these ingredients and through them, these, and then the three gunas, the mahatattva, and they all enter into, and they all combine together and form these universes. And they emanate from the pores in the seed form. Um, um, and then they grow um, and then there are all these universes are created and then the lord rests again um, actually this time not the previous time this time he again rests after creation for 1000 years and these universes are floating and they are submerged in the causal ocean in the karma ocean and they're like empty shells and they are created and then the lord now wants to start creation so then the lord um, he is referred by the name hiranyagarbha then the Lord enters into each of this universe. And um, um, then once he enters into all these universe, then from his pores comes water or the sweat of the Lord. Um, and that fills the universe with half water, half sweat. Half universe is filled with the sweat of the Lord. And that ocean is called Garbo Ocean. And because the Lord is lying within, in the form of Hiranyagarbha, um, he is lying within each of these universes. He is referred by the name Garbha Daksha Yishu. And once he enters into each of the universe, now the universe are enlivened. Just like the body now. If the, there is no soul in the body, then body is dead. Likewise, these are all material elements. Although they are energy from the Lord, they are material by nature. And these are like dead universes. But when the Lord enters, it is like the soul of the universe. When the Lord enters, now it is this the Brahmaji describes in Narad Muni. All the universes are enlivened. And now things are going to start. Um, and what is the first thing that happens is the Lord manifests his Virat Rupa. And through Virat Rupa, Virat Rupa, now there is creation within this universe that is also done by uh, Garbo Daksha Vishnu in the form of his Virat Rupa. See, this universe has 14 planetary systems and they are all, they, are, they all manifest by the Virat Rupa, um, Virat Rupa of the Lord. And then this chapter ends, this chapter ends with the description of, quick description of Virat Rupa. Then Brahmaji says, uh, um, uh, the, then there is in Virat Rupa, there is Satyalok, which is the head of the Virat Rupa. Tapalok is the lips. Janalok is the neck. Maharlok is the chest. Then Swarglok is the heart. Bhuvarlok is just below the heart. Bhurlok, which is earth planet, is the navel. Atallok is the waist. Vitallok is the thigh. Sutallok is the knees. Then the calf's bone is the talatal. Then ankles is mahatal. Then, you know, the portion, the lotus feet. The top portion of the lotus feet is rasatal. And the sole, the bottom portion of the lotus feet is pata. And then um, the brahmanas are at the mouth. Kshatriyas are at the arms. Vaishyas are at the thighs. And shudras are at the legs. So in this way, when Garbha Daksai Vishnu, when he enters into each of this universe and there is this whole planetary system that is formed. And this is now. And from him now comes Brahma. Uh, and this is, so that's all Brahma explained to Narada 
at this point of time. So again, the entire summary is Narmani asks Brahma, are you God? And what is your position? Is there somebody superior than you? But you seem to be like in full control of everything. There is nobody beyond you. Whatever you like, like a like a spider, unobstructed, creates the whole universe. You seem to be doing everything, but you are doing austerities to please somebody. So can you tell me something more about this? And Brahma, being a pure devotee, gives all the credit to the Lord. And Narayana asks question, what are the characteristics of this universe? What are the ingredients? How this universe is created? How it is conserved? And not all questions, four questions are answered. Rest two are answered in these two chapters. Answer these six questions, and this is Brahman or the Samvad. Then, then Brahma explains the characteristics of the universe. He says, This universe characteristics it, there is ingredients, there is karma, there is uh, uh, kala, time shakti, there is jiva shakti, and, and there is swabhav, guna shakti, the three gunas, and they all are representation or come there Narayan Shakti. So ultimately everything is Narayan because everything is Narayan Shakti and I am also created by him. Um, and then he explains how the primary creation happens starting from Karna Dakshai Vishnu and then how he waits for thousand years then he enters manifests his Garbha Dakshai Vishnu and the first thing he does is manifests his Virat Rupa and that is the process of creation. Okay, so now we will read only the translation of two verses. Can you see the screen? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhupada. Maybe number 15 and 16. <clears throat> He's explaining the uh, what is the shelter, who is the shelter of the universe, and everything within the universe. What is everything dependent upon on the shelter? So Brahmaji says, Narayana Pada Veda Deva Narayana Angaja Narayana Pada Loka. Narayana Paramakha. The Vedic literatures are made by and are meant for the Supreme Lord. The demigods are also meant for serving the Lord as parts of his body. The different planets are also meant for the sake of the Lord. And the different sacrifices are performed just to please him. And then number 16. Narayana Paro Yogo Yogo Narayana Parantapaha, Narayana Parangyanam, Narayana Paragati. All different types of meditation or mysticism are means for realizing Narayan. All austerities are aimed at achieving Narayan. The culture of transcendental knowledge is for getting a glimpse of Narayan. The goal of Gyan is to get a glimpse of Narayan. And ultimately, salvation is entering the kingdom of God. And the gati or the goal of our life is also to attain the life. <clears throat> so that's all I have for today. And let's see if there is any discussion at this point of time. Hare Krishna Prabhupada Danda Pranam Prabhuji, so uh, first question I had is that uh, Narad Muni asked this everything Brahma. So before that or after that he had uh, gotten the uh, loss darshan. Can you say the question again? Narad so, Muni? Uh, when Narad Muni asked these questions to Brahma, right? Hmm. So before that he had gotten lost darshan or after that he got? Before that, right? Oh, you mean um, when he was a small child? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So before before that he got, right? Before yeah. Brahma's birth, in the previous Kalpa, Narad Muni was a small child and he became self-realized. And when he appeared as son of Brahma, then he was still born in ignorance, just like um, even when 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, he acted as if he is in ignorance. But when he met his spiritual master, before that he was acting like a pundit scholar. And then he started uh, Sankirtan movement. Just like Bhakti Vinod Thakur was very much interested in many things. But when he met, when he read Chaitanya Charitamrita, he became a devotee. Although he is the Lord himself, he was covered. He The Lord was never covered. He was covering himself purposefully. But Bhakti Vinod Thakur was covered. But after Chaitanya Charitamrita, he became realized. Um, importance of spiritual master and Narad Muni was self-realized completely but when he was born as Brahma that's why it is said that we are all born in ignorance and when we meet our spiritual master we begin our journey from where we left off in the previous life and here uh, Narada he was he was covered and when he heard knowledge from Brahma then he attained his original true state of a pure devotee of Narayan and then he traveled in preach what he heard from his father Oh, thank you, Prabhu. So it means like uh, whatever darshan he had in previous life, uh, he forgot that. But um, as he had got Krishna's mercy, uh, he got uh, the next birth as Bra son of Brahma, right? Yes, by the Lord's mercy. Yes. And then yeah, he yeah. was again forgotten, again reawakened. Again. Now he is with us. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, Prabhuji. And uh, one more question. So, uh, when we uh, take this as like Krishna is the doer, we are not doer, but still we get the reactions, I means whatever karma we perform, uh, likewise our uh, future is formed, right? In short. Yes. So, in that, uh, like, still we know that there is a uh, like Krishna has given us free will, right? So, like we can follow this sequence, like whatever desire, whatever how we desire, and likewise uh, the karmas are formed, and in that sequence, the uh, results of our karma, right? Yeah, one second. Mataji, so I heard you up to um, um, karma and we have free will and then you complete your question. Yeah, so what I am asked, what is my question that uh, we know that Krishna has given us a free will, right? So mm. it means that we can have one kind of desire. It means if we are uh, read, we, if we are performing bhakti, then we may uh, have the correct desire, right? Which will mm. be according to Krishna's uh, will, means mm. what Krishna mm. desires. Mm. And uh, accordingly, whatever we perform karmas, then accordingly the uh, reaction will get, means mm. whatever the things will get. So, mm. we are not doer, but we are having desire, right? That, that thing we do have in our hand, right? That's well, the only thing we do have, right? Well, mother, the desire is influenced by the three gunas. Oh, okay. you know? Like if I want, say, fame, now the it is mode of passion who is giving me this desire. And again, the gunas are at work. Yeah. And what only free will I have, actually it is said that when we are conditioned, we have almost zero free will. And when we become actually, mm -hmm. when we because we are controlled by the three modes. So when we are fully controlled by three modes, we have almost no free will. But bhakti, mm -hmm. that bhakti desire also is not coming from our free will, but it is called shastrik shaddha. Through shastra, mm -hmm. we are understanding and we are practicing bhakti, and the sangha helps us, and um, and then we just we practice based on shastrik shaddha, and now we are becoming a little bit more. Actually, we are gaining some freedom now from the three modes. Mm -hmm. And now, yeah, yeah. here? Yeah, so it means that uh, whatever uh, like uh, decisions we take, those are based on only uh, uh, mode of material uh, under influence. So yeah. nothing is in our hand in short. Like we can only try to be in mode of goodness when we act to us. Yeah, and that also comes, I mean, even if we try, it's actually the bhakti component which is bringing us to goodness. Right, right. yeah. 
so ultimately that we can perform bhakti but nothing is within our control that is not that's the example, only thing we can example given if in a ocean if there is a floating object then what happens to the object object is helpless as the ocean goes up object goes up ocean goes down ocean goes in wave ocean goes towards we are just like this is called the ocean of material existence and we are just going with the waves of up and down and we are like helpless creatures in that but then bhakti is actually is like the lord coming and picking us up from this ocean so we can only stay in a boat at the boat um, that's the only thing okay uh, one last question for you so uh, vishnu uh, like there are different avatars right like uh, mahavishnu and agarbodaksha uh, vishnu and uh, shirodaksha vishnu these are purusha avatar right mm, correct and uh, uh, vishnu uh, which is one of the three gunas like uh, controlling the sattva guna he is uh, another uh, guna avatar right that's what we call right गुणावतार या गुणावतार इज विष्णु शिवा एंड ब्रह्मा राइट सो विष्णु आउट ऑफ दो थ्री गुणावतार इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दीज थ्री पुरुष अवतार राइट यस यस सो व्हेन एवर वी हियर दैट विष्णु सम पर्टिकुलर डिवोटी हैड दर्शन ऑफ विष्णु सो दैट इज दैट गुणावतार विष्णु राइट ओ when we i mean all the different actions performed by vishnu like narad muni like avadhru maharaj he saw narayan narayan ke dashyo daksha vishnu so it is said that all of them come from shyo daksha vishnu garbho daksha vishnu and karna daksha vishnu they are always at the bottom of the universe hmm. and their vikar like their aakar their form is like millions of million is a small trillions of miles long and they're just deciding then all the demi gods they go to narayan that is shiro that is shiro daksha vishnu on the milk ocean they go to milk ocean they pray and that vishnu on the milk ocean he goes and he takes different forms and he helps he hears to the devotees he reciprocates and everything is done by shiro daksha vishnu who is maintaining other oh, okay. two are just part of creation and they are in half sleeping state okay and then the uh, vishnu which is in the form of guna avatar he is only uh, performing the task of uh, controlling the sattva guna that's all that is your daksha vishnu who is maintaining oh so uh, guna avatar vishnu from guna avatar and uh, shiro daksha vishnu is same or different then yeah they are same na no? because uh, yeah, he is maintaining should any problem comes all the devatas they go to narayan and then he takes different forms and then he acts and then he does whatever it takes so he is the one who actually maintains the universe no? hmm, okay okay so it means that like shirodaksha vishnu we can call purushartar as well as guna avatar no both yes, perform task it's performed by the that yes ma'am okay. yes so it means like krishna expands himself in different forms of vishnu just to perform to take care some task right particular task of creation yes, or maintenance yes. or whatever okay. okay thank you thank you prabhu hari krishna <laughs> sorry yeah. i was checking with some basics but sometimes it's confusing when we go deeper and deeper in the bhagavad gita welcome to hari krishna okay anything else anyone has yeah. so if it's not like can i ask for you Ah yes, so then we're going. Then we're going. So we we hear that uh, from uh, Mahavishnu lands, uh, impregnates the the um, total material energy like mass of the electricity particle. So, so we we hear that uh, from his glands, many living entities injected into the that area. Now, so we also hear that from his pores. Uh, many uh, universes like bubbles they arise. So I was thinking, so in in that bubbles equivalent to a universe, is bubble equivalent to a universe as as it expands, enters as Garbhadakshayishnu from whose lotus stem 
um, Brahmaji appears like that. So when the universe is coming, so when we see universal form of the Lord, so that bubble is in a way a universal form of the Lord. So I, I got a little confused that that universal form is coming like that. What is I mean, what is the correct understanding? Of the From the bubble, which is the whole universe, the Lord enters a Garbha Dakshai Vishnu. He lies at the bottom. And then from him manifests the universal form. And universal form is within the bubble. It's an expansion of Garbha Dakshai Vishnu. And all the planetary systems is part of that universal form. And how that Brahmaji explained today. The head is um, uh, Satya Lok and the soul of the feet is Patal Lok and the navel is Arthri planet, Bhu Lok and like this. Got it. Got it. Clear. So the one uh, query it came while you were answering. Like you mentioned about the free will is actually not free. And uh, the the Shastrik Shraddha is basically, you said the word, Shastrik Shraddha is there. And from there, things move on. And as Bhakti increases, our scope of free will increases. So this Shastrik Shraddha, is it same when we say that Guru Krishna Prasadipai Bhakti Lata Beach. So that beach is referred to Shastik Shatta or is it open for all? Like does it depend upon Sukriti in the past or is it Shastik Shatta is an option for all or does it depend upon um, Yeah, it is a, factor? Yeah, from the past provision. It begins like Rupa Goswami explains nectar of devotion begins with Agyat Sukriti. And then gradually by bhakti, the guru shraddha, like bona fide guru shraddha, shastrik shraddha same. Because guru is representing shastra. He speaks what shastra says. So it is one and the same. Parampara, guru, sadhu, um, shastra. This is all called shastriya shraddha. Um, and how much shraddha one has is how much advanced one is in shastra. That much one will be able to, that much Shraddha will have. And how much actual Shraddha we have is manifest into our activities. If um, we hear, but if we don't have faith, then knowledge may be there, but Shraddha may not be there. Um, Shraddha is not there, then it, it won't translate into activities. It is the Shraddha which is the underlying component from Sadhu Sangha to Bhajana Kriya to Anathanibriti. It's the underlying Shraddha which is increasing. Uh, another Shraddha is Lokik Shraddha. Lokik Shraddha and Shastri Shraddha. Lokik Shraddha is um, like uh, our Shraddha in Krishna is based on our material benefits. Like if like if I'm a guru and if I have this many disciples, then I'm a good guru. Or uh, if I have this much success, then I have this. If I'm this much famous online, then I'm a better devotee. So this is all uh, Lokik Shraddha. Um, but actual Shastri Shraddha is based on how much taste I have and how much absorption I have in Krishna. Um, or faith in uh, opulence. If I, have, if I have opulence, I'll be happy. If I have this, 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 this is all Lokik Shraddha. So Shastri Shraddha is the result of Bhakti. And that begins with Agyat Sukriti. Well, round and round to Vidhi, but yes, some, some impression I got. Very very Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Anyone has any other question? All right, thank you very much for joining. One chakal patal besha, repassing to be a vachan. Patitanam pavan in pil vashna veganamunam. Ananta koti vashna vrinda kijai, shila prabhupada the kijai. Nanda prana, prozi mata, she is very Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Dhanat Pranam. Thank you, Ganesh Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Dhanat Pranam. Thank you, Siddhamata. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna.